Are you led by the Holy Spirit? What does it mean to be led by the Holy Spirit? Well, in this video, we're going to answer those questions. We're going to look at what it means to be led by the Spirit and what being led by the Spirit is not. Now, in the Old Testament, there are types, shadows, and symbols of our relationship with God. And one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament was the cloud in the wilderness. And so the cloud covered them from the heat of the sun during the day, and it was a pillar of fire by night. And so that cloud is a symbol of the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives. And so let's look here at Numbers chapter 9 as it talks about their relationship in connection to this cloud. Numbers chapter 9 verse 15. On the day the tabernacle, the tent of the covenant of law was sent up, the cloud covered it from evening till morning. The cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire. And whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out. And wherever the cloud settled, the Israelites in camp, right? And so whenever this cloud moved, they would move. And then whenever the cloud stopped, they would kind of set up camp underneath this cloud. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out. And at his command, they encamped. And as long as the cloud stayed over the tab tabernacle, they remained in camp. And when the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. Right. So for however long this cloud stayed in that position, that is how long they were to stay. Whether it was a short time or whether it was a long time, they were not to move until this cloud moved. And then it says sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days and at the Lord's command they would encamp and then at his command they would set out. And sometimes the cloud stayed only uh, from evening till morning and when it lifted in the morning they set out. And so sometimes it was just a few days and so they would unpack all their stuff, they would, you know, you know, set up camp and then boom, it would move. And sometimes it was just the evening, right? It was just a short period of time. And then they had to set out and move again. It says, whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days, a month or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. But when it lifted, they would set out. And at the Lord's command, they encamped. And at the Lord's command, they set out, right? And so this is a picture of the Spirit-led life. This is a pattern for how we are supposed to live, that when the Holy Spirit moves, we are supposed to move. When the Holy Spirit, you know, doesn't move, when he says, stay put, do not move, we are supposed to stay exactly where we are. We are to move and act in step with the Holy Spirit. You know, there are times when God has you stay in the same place, the same job, the same position, the same career. And then there are times when God moves you out of the place you've been because he wants you to journey somewhere new. And sometimes it's a new place physically. Sometimes it's a new career, a new place he wants you to serve, a, a new opportunity he wants you to move into. For example, I had no desire to be on YouTube whatsoever. I have my hands full pastoring a growing church, writing books, and keeping up with my three kids. I didn't need one more thing to do, but through a number of circumstances, it became clear that the Holy Spirit was leading me to start this channel, and so I obeyed. And let me just go ahead and say thank you to all of you who like, subscribe, watch, and comment on these videos. It gives me the motivation to keep going because there are times when I get swamped at work and I'm tempted just to stop, just to shut the channel down, but y'all keep me going. So thank you so, so much for all of you who have been supporting and liking and commenting on these videos and sharing them on social media. The majority of the traffic from my videos actually comes through uh, Facebook share. So every time you share this video, it helps me out tremendously. So thank you so much for that. And this would also be a great time for you to know what? Smash that like button, right? But an important aspect of being led by the Spirit is understanding what the leading of the Holy Spirit is not. So let's look at a couple things 
that it does not mean when we talk about being led by the Spirit, right? So being led by the Spirit doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit will tell you every single thing you need to do in every area of your life, right? That's why whenever people start saying, you know, God told me this and God told me that, to everything, they get weird because that's not the Holy Spirit, right? You are not a puppet. God doesn't want to continually pull all the strings in your life. He wants a relationship with you. He does not want to be your puppet master, right? Like, I don't want to tell my kids every single thing they need to do. I want them to clean up their toys, flush the toilet, and brush their teeth without me telling them to do it. So being led by the Spirit doesn't mean that God is going to tell you every single thing you need to do. Number two, being led by the Spirit doesn't mean He's going to tell you to do weird things that you can blame on God. You know, sometimes people do weird things in the name of being led by the Holy Spirit. When I was in uh, ministry school, Bible college, uh, there was one of uh, the guys uh, in our school who rode to church on a moped, and uh, he, he crashed one day and, and skinned up his arm really bad, and so we were just you know, praying for him that he would have a quick, speedy recovery um, and that he'd heal up. And so while we're praying for him, one of the guys says, you know what, God told me that I'm supposed to spit on your arm. Now his entire arm was just a, a, a scab just from the road rash from crashing on his bike. And so this kid says, God told me to spit directly on your wound directly on that massive scab on your arm. And so, you know, this, the guy who had the, the accident, you know, he's like, oh, I mean, if God's telling you, I'm, I mean, who am I to tell you, you know what? So, you know, he lets him spit on him. And so he spits on his arm. And then the guy goes, oh man, I'm sorry. God told me that wasn't enough. I, I need to spit on you more. And so he's like, Ugh. you know, and just, just spits all over this guy's arm. And guess what? He didn't get miraculously healed. Uh, his recovery time was the normal from any sort of crash like that. And so this guy got spit on for absolutely nothing, right? So, so being led by the Spirit doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit is going to tell you to do weird things that you could blame on God. And number three, being led by the Spirit doesn't make you flaky. You know, some people who claim to be led by the Spirit are the most flaky, unreliable people I've ever met, right? Being led by the Spirit doesn't mean that you bounce around from church to church each Sunday because the Spirit is leading you. No, the scripture says that those who are planted in the house of God will flourish in the courts of God. God wants you to be planted in a local church, not floating around week to week as the Spirit wills. That is not being led by the Spirit. Romans 8, 14 says that those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Now that word for led is the Greek word ago, which is the picture of an animal with a rope around its neck that is being led by the owner. And, and this is not like kind of when you walk your dog, right? And the dog is kind of pulling you in the direction that, that it wants to go and you follow. Yet that is exactly the relationship that many of us have with the Holy Spirit. We just go whatever we want, whatever direction we want to go, and we expect the Holy Spirit to follow us and to bless our decisions. But he's the one who's supposed to be up front leading, and it's our job to follow him. And see, the thing about the Holy Spirit is that when he leads us, he does so by gently tugging on our heart. He doesn't pull or, or force us to go in the right direction. He gently tugs on our hearts. And so we need to learn how to recognize, discern, and respond to the gentle leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I've learned that whenever the Holy Spirit speaks to me and tells me to do something, it's usually followed by a battle between my head and and my heart, right? And so the Holy Spirit tugs on my heart, and then my head says, you know, I don't understand. Well, why would he want me to go there? Why would he want me to do that? Why does he want me to say that? That doesn't make sense, right? The Holy Spirit says, obey, and our mind says, no, I don't want to do that. I'm going to look foolish. It'll be look, I'll look ridiculous if it doesn't work out. And so we have this kind of tug of war between where the Spirit is trying to lead us and where our mind is, is often pulling us. And it's usually in the opposite direction. And so we need to learn how to recognize, 
discern, and most importantly, respond to the leading of the Holy Spirit, even when it doesn't make sense to our natural mind, even when it's something that we don't feel like we're supposed to do. We need to learn how to respond to the leading of the Holy Spirit, because as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. And, and that word for children in Romans 8, 14 means a mature child. See, there are different words used in the Greek language to describe children. There's a, a word for babies, for teenagers, for young men and women, and then there's a word for fully grown, mature children. And that's the word that is used here in Romans 8, 14. So the mature sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit. So the mature sons and daughters of God have, have made being led by the Holy Spirit a practice in their life. Hey, if you found this video helpful, do me a favor and smash that like button. Comment in the section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this video about being led by the Spirit. And if you have any stories or you know things you can share about times when the Holy Spirit has led you and you obeyed the prompting of the Holy Spirit. If you haven't already yet subscribed to this channel, click on that bell so that you can be notified when new videos come out. And if maybe you'd like me to do a video on how to be led by the Holy Spirit, like what are the, the practices maybe in, in my life or that we see from scripture about how we can develop a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, how we can better understand the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit in our lives. If that's something that you're interested in, also let me know in the comment section below. And remember, if it's not good, God's not done. Thanks for watching.